The hour hand is constantly turning. There at a department store Hannah was busy with part-time work. It's nothing new anymore if a handsome young man named Alex comes to see him, even if it's just buying mineral water he tries to keep getting close to the beautiful girl. Ten thousand thousand. Hannah in her flat voice. Alex handed over a one hundred thousands of money. Hannah took a fifty thousand sheet of money and two sheets of twenty thousand in the drawer. He pushed the change to the young man in front of him. Just take the change. I'm not a beggar. Ah, okay, Alex took the money, then put it in his pants pocket. Then came out and sat on the front bench of the department store, he intended to wait for the girl there. An hour later, Hannah rushed to take off her department store uniform, which was a blue vest. Because there was already someone who came to change her shift, the girl came out of the department store and passed Alex who was sitting there, without saying hello Alex followed the girl. As usual Hannah remained indifferent to what the handsome young man was doing who always distracted her. But the longer Hannah felt uncomfortable. What are you doing? Me? Ah, I'm following you. Why are you following me? Me? I just want to be more familiar with it. Why me? Because of you, because we are one bench, yes we are one bench. I don't want to. Don't want to. Yes. Don't want anything. Familiar with you. Why don't you want to be my friend? Stop collaring me. Hannah also started to step up again leaving Alex, who was still sculpting in her place. A few days later, as usual, Alex, the handsome young man with his cheerful face, still tried to approach Hannah tirelessly even though sometimes Hannah's words often hurt her. On a bench Hannah, the genius and diligent student, was reading her books. And there, Alec looked at Hannah. Put his head on the stool with his arms folded. Can you stop, Hannah in an annoyed tone. But Alex just shook his head making Hannah even more annoyed. Go, I'm sick, Alex shook his head again. Comment. All right, if you don't want to go, let me just go, Hannah stepped away, and Alex followed Hannah towards the roof of the school building. There Hannah continued to read the book that had been delayed earlier. However Alex still followed her, and made her emotional. Hyuffs, Hannah snorted irritably. Read it, I'm just silent anyway, won't bother you. You've crossed the line, and I've been patient enough, suddenly Hannah's eyes began to turn red, as well as her face, anger began to take hold of her. And that made Alex frown. In the end, he managed to provoke Hannah's anger, in fact, he had deliberately approached Hannah to prove the news he heard. Alex waited for what Hannah would do next. Let us be friends, I just want us to be friends, is it so difficult, Alex fished. Get out of here, Sebalum underscore. Before what, Alex deliberately cut off the girl's words. Hannah smiled sarcastically, then she picked up a wood and started to float the wood to Alex. But Alex did not stand still, he who had a fairly great martial arts, parried by holding the wood with a smile. Hannah grew angry, and she went berserk even more. But Alex always managed to escape the blows the girl was throwing. And Alex managed to lock Hannah, Hannah was unable to move her body, the girl screamed hysterically while trying to get herself off Alex. One. Let go of me, or I kill you. How could you kill me? Let go of me bastard. Hey Hannah you are a student, and you are a smart student, it's not good like this. It's none of your business assholes, let go. Just let it go by yourself if you can. Suddenly the girl felt dizzy, and then she fell unconscious. Hannah, come to your senses, Hannah, Alex panicked as he patted the girl's cubby cheek. A few moments later, suddenly Hannah began to open her eyes slowly, her head felt dizzy, her vision was blurred, she vaguely saw a man's figure hugging her petite body while calling out her name. Hannah, are you sober? Ow, what has happened? Hannah asked puzzled, and Alex was also confused, because Hannah's tone suddenly changed. Hannah, 
who used to always be flat, has now turned soft. You don't remember her. Holding both of her temples, Hannah tried to remember what had already happened. She was shocked and was about to cry, she remembered it all. What he had done all along, he remembered all his vices. God, what have I been practicing? Hannah cried as she ruffled her hair in frustration. What do you mean? Alex asked in confusion. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm so this way. I don't know why sometimes I can't hold back my emotions, Hannah's tears flowed freely. Really I don't understand what you mean. Trust me, I'm not that kind of person, I'm not a psychopath, trust me, nor do I know why I've been like this all along, Hannah cried hysterically in fear, Alex who didn't know what to do, he took Hannah in his arms, trying to calm the girl down. Hannah, I believe you, that's it, don't cry anymore. I hope that from now on you can return to your good nature again." That night, Hannah tried to recall the events of that night. Yes. What's the matter? I have to go. Hannah got up and ran, Alex chased her, she ran a long way, and at the end of her came to a small passage, Hannah entered small passage with Alex followed. Why are you here Hannah? I'm sure something went wrong with this passage, since that night. I've been unable to control my emotions, Hannah in her gentle tone that hadn't been heard for a long time. But this street is just an ordinary street, there is nothing unusual at all. But at that time, I remember clearly, me and Nara, Av, Hannah suddenly held her head in pain. Hannah what happened? My head, my head hurts. Hannah, you have a nosebleed. Hannah also wiped the fresh blood that flowed from her nose. Come on me take you home. But I have to investigate this place. We will investigate next time, I promise to help you. Tappy underscore. Get on my back, you're already pale and limp so, let's take me home. No need, I can go home by myself. Go up, Alex's tone rose slightly. Ow, all right, Hannah ended obeying Alex, and Alex drove Hannah home. Arriving at her destination, Nara and her aunt were surprised because Hannah looked limp with blood splattered soaking the uniform of the handsome young man young holding her. Hannah. What's wrong with Hannah? The aunt asked frantically. I think she's sick by, where's Hannah's room? Let me take it to his room. The aunt also escorted Alex to Hannah's room and put her on the bed. Nara, get some warm water and call a doctor. All right, Ma. What about my nephew, Doc? Mom's niece is okay, she's just tired, tell her to rest for two days, she will recover, and this is the prescription for medicine, the doctor said as he handed over a sheet of paper written prescription there. Thank goodness, thank you, Doc. You're welcome. Alex waits in the living room with Nara's companion. Why can you be with Hannah? What really happened? Excuse me, can I ask you a question first? Ah? Okay, please. What really happened that night? That night? Yes, the night Hannah so turned into a strange girl. One. Ah that, that night, blah blah blah, Nara also recounted all the incidents that night. It's so weird. I really feel guilty for Hannah, had I not forced her to go down that road, she couldn't have been like this. It's all happened, it's better now that you help me and Hannah to investigate all this. All right. Hannah is now back on her good nature, you take care of her yes, just afraid that she will return to her vices again. Really? Thankfully, I really miss Hannah's former nature. Then I'll excuse me. Wait. What's the matter? Get to know, I'm Nara, you're Alex Alfino that transfer student, right? Yes, that's right. Greetings, yes, comment. Alex nodded his head, and then passed away.